Nothing is truly ever over when it comes to stories that we cover on this channel because it's essentially impossible to put up definitive beginnings or endings on sagas that play out in real life. But we've definitely closed a few chapters over the years regarding some of the more lengthy coverage. And in almost every scenario, you know, you wait a few months and then something else happens. These people, they can't simply disappear. They're like cockroaches. They can't help themselves. They always come out to eat. Mm -hmm. Martin Scarelli goes to jail, but then turns out some journalist threw her life away and fell in love with him. And now he's out of jail and he's, he's in the back. crypto. Yeah, he's back, baby. Uh, there's also Malachi Love Robinson. Uh, he got arrested and publicly humiliated for pretending to be a doctor. Uh, but then he just moved over to defrauding the elderly, among other things. You get movie pass going bankrupt and then coming right back. Uh, Elon Musk does something stupid and it takes less than 48 hours for a new scandal to appear. Donald Trump loses an election and I mean, we're living that right now. It's, you see how that has Never gonna hear out. the end of that. Hmm. So yeah, today we have yet another end of a chapter yeah. to an extremely long real life story that we've been covering since before this channel was even born, I think. It's been a long one, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're already anticipating what happens next because when you're as consistently terrible as the dynamic duo at the center of this story, there's always going to be something stupid right around the corner. It's actually been eerily quiet. This is probably why. Yeah, so yeah, that shouldn't take away from enjoying this moment. Mm -hmm. It's definitely Breathe not, it in, everyone. It's not over, but Jacob Wall and Jack Bergman have officially pleaded guilty to a felony charge relating to their deployment of robocalls meant to dissuade citizens, specifically people of color in heavily Democratic areas, from voting in the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. uh, Wall and Bergman deployed these robocalls across multiple cities and states, and they face multiple charges in every one of those jurisdictions, with many cases still ongoing. But this latest news comes from Cleveland, Ohio, where the duo pled guilty to felony telecommunications fraud, where as part of their plea deal, they will each have to pay a maximum fine of uh, $2,500. Okay. But they do face up to a year in prison each. Mm -hmm. So it's not nothing. The, the $2,500 thing, it is such a, in the grand scheme of things, obviously $2,500 is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, like, Imagine doing a crime at this level and being yeah. like, well, okay, just bake the $2,500 into the marketing or something like that. It's like, it's such a slap yeah. on the wrist that it's it, it's just odd to have this tacked on. This is the on. one thing that hasn't been affected by Joe Biden's inflation is uh, the, the criminal fines levied against people found guilty of... Uh, you know, election interference in the state of Ohio. Yeah, but it's all, yeah, specifically <laughs> that, because it is also hard to be like, we should raise that considering uh, a lot of people are unjustifiably arrested. Also, they're never getting things. this money. Oh, for sure. Jacob Wall still owes money on like crimes he committed when he was a, still a teenager. He's still facing uh, charges in California for like securities fraud or something. Yeah, like that. I don't know why he's so hard to track down, but uh, yeah, the man owes a lot of money in a lot of places, so. I would, uh, I wouldn't expect to see that twenty five hundred dollars come they, through. They can't serve him because he refuses to appear at CinemaCon. Yeah, they keep asking. Yeah, Jacob, mm -hmm. show your to catch a predator knockoff <laughs> down at CinemaCon. But yes, twenty five hundred dollars, uh, maybe a year in prison. Not exactly the type of justice that you would hope for, considering they were literally trying to disrupt democracy. Jacob Wall being in prison for even a day is a reward in itself, if you ask me. But the sentencing hasn't happened yet, so well, it's just an if. Uh, but yeah, as part of the plea deal, 14 other counts of fraud and bribery were dropped. But again, this is just one in a line of felony charges stemming from just this specific scam. Uh, here's local news outlet cleveland.com with more on this. Jacob Wall, 24, of Irvine, California, and Jack Berkman, 56, of Arlington, Virginia, face a maximum of a year in prison after they pleaded guilty to a fifth-degree felony charge of telecommunications fraud. The two were charged in October 2020 after prosecutors said their group, Project 1599, placed more than 3,500 robocalls that spread misinformation to targeted voters on Cleveland's east side and in East Cleveland. And here's a quick refresher from uh, earlier local reporting regarding the details of the robocalls and Project 1599, which Wall and Berkman founded. The caller told potential voters that police and debt collection companies could use personal information that voters put on their mail-in ballots to track down people who have outstanding warrants and credit card debt. The claim is not true. The caller also falsely claimed that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control would use the information to implement mandatory vaccines. Authorities have said that the duo made more than 85,000 calls beginning in August to residents of Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Illinois. 
The call's targeting voters with area codes mostly in urban areas with high percentages of minority and Democratic voters. The calls featured a woman warning voters against being finessed into giving your private information to the man. And the funniest thing about all of this is they could have easily gotten away with these robocalls if they hadn't signed their names to the robocalls. Yes. It's just a very, like, what a, what a move. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe it thought that it would buy them some sort of like, oh, well, why would we do that if we knew we were committing a crime type thing? I, I just think these guys are so narcissistic and self-centered that if they were going to commit this type of crime and not get credit for it, what's maybe the point? that? Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I think it's a way to be like. No, we didn't know what we were doing was wrong, and that's why we put our names I on I mean, it. Uh, and that's another thing. The, both these guys have gotten away with so many things for so long that uh, the act, the concept of consequences probably... I was like, well, what, what are they going to do? That's also... Yeah, <laughs> I mean... Uh, uh, but yeah, so attorneys representing this duo attempted to have the charges thrown out by claiming that these robocalls were uh, protected by the First Amendment. Of course. And uh, now that they've pleaded guilty, instead, they will be sentenced on November 29th. So no idea if the judge will go for the maximum and actually give them time in prison. Just one one day. Just give me one day of Jacob Wool in maximum federal prison. I, I don't know. It, look, Just one day. You might get your wish and then some. Or we could get nothing. I, that's all I'm asking is one day. Uh, but yeah, the fact that they've admitted at least some guilt in Ohio, that probably doesn't <laughs> yeah. bode well for the rest of the other charges hmm. that they're facing in yeah, multiple well, states. Yeah, well, I was guilty of it in Ohio, but... Michigan, Illinois. I don't know who did that. Don't ask me. That may be somebody else. Quadruple Jeopardy. Yeah. Um, also, but- the, the audio of uh, these calls is, is out there, and it's, it's pretty fucking wild. Mail-in voting sounds great, but did you know that if you vote by mail, your personal information will be part of a public database that will be used by police departments to track down old warrants and be used by credit card companies to collect outstanding debts? The CDC is even pushing to use records for mail-in voting to track people for mandatory vaccines. Don't be finessed into giving your private information to the man. Stay safe and beware of vote by mail. Pretty fucking wild. It's mm-hmm. just like, what were they thinking? They weren't. Well, I mean, they were. But they're all of their schemes are literally this dumb. Yeah. It's just that, like, it's so dumb that I feel like people felt bad for punishing them. It's like, it's so strange. It is odd. But um, over uh, in Michigan, uh, a a separate state where they are also facing charges, Wall and Berkman still face up to 24 years in prison if they're convicted on the multiple felonies that they're facing in that state, which again, they probably gonna take a plea deal and get less, but this all could stack up. The the greatest thing about federalism is uh, is when you can be found guilty of a crime in multiple states. The same crime. Yeah, <laughs> it's not double jeopardy <laughs> if you uh, if you just commit the same crime in several states at the same time. That's federalism, baby. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're also facing a civil lawsuit in New York where one of the companies involved has already been fined fifty thousand dollars, and Wall and Berkman personally face upwards of three million dollars worth of fines. Um, this is, of course... They're not going to get that money. <laughs> yeah, no, one's, no one's getting the money. Hopefully some jail time. Maybe, maybe Jacob's dad can spot him. He's going to have to sell a lot of calendars. Like a lot of uh, lewd pictures with his girlfriend, Breck. Oh, no, I'm going to have to do up some more pictures for the calendar oh, with my hot just, girlfriend? Oh, geez, well, you know, for my son, I'll do anything. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, this is, of course, in addition to uh, at least Jacob Wall's other financial crimes in California and the just constant stream of legitimately dangerous unsettling, or, you know, in most cases, just extremely weird schemes, scams, and cons that the duo have just made entire careers out of. Yeah, the most recent thing, that Predator DC YouTube show was Where like... people actually uh, potentially got assaulted yeah, by being involved as actors my, on it. I didn't think my opinion of these two could go any lower, but after hearing uh, behind the scenes testimony about how that show's production went, uh, I somehow my opinion of them just somehow went even lower than before. Just truly terrible people that actually do belong behind bars. Yeah. It's like I was just saying. It's like with a lot of things, you point at them and laugh because it's so ridiculous. But they are capable of doing actual heinous shit. Yeah. Um, So like we said at the beginning of today's episode, I mean, this is, I am sure, the not the last time at all that we will have heard from Wall and Berkman and not just related to these crimes. They're going to be up to something. Yeah. No, they're going to try to get as many griffs out while they can. If, if jail time is on the table, 
Yeah. My only regret is One that, last uh, job. <laughs> that it didn't time out perfectly where uh, the, the New York charges weren't just civil and they just got thrown into jail at the same time as uh, Martin Scarelli and Billy McFarlane. Yeah, that would have been a real brain trust. A real Arkham Asylum. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, whew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, speaking of people who can't stay out of the news for all the wrong reasons, the consequences of Kanye West's actions over the past few weeks have continued to play out. And you might be thinking that we're talking about Kanye losing another gig or another sponsor. And, well, that does continue to happen. Although Adidas, a company founded by Nazis, does seem to be holding out, interestingly enough. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the very real consequences of Kanye's actions and proof that the fucked up ramblings of a man with this big of an audience, this big of an ego, can yeah. and will open people up to these horrible beliefs, but also allow people who are already bigoted, racist people, to feel far more comfortable coming out of their their shells into the world and sharing <laughs> yeah. their terrible opinions than they ever really should be. Yes. It's all just Kanye talking a bunch of nonsense until the reality of his words, what they mean, and what they can cause sets in. And oh boy, we got a real taste of that over the weekend here in uh, sunny liberal Los Angeles when SoCal Nazi protesters displayed banners and waved at traffic over the one of the biggest highways in the country. And they even mentioned Kanye West by name. Probably back. When I saw this, I was like, I literally cannot believe that this happened as quickly as it did. Um, I think this same group has, they've been operating in so, like, they've done this in, like, San Diego and Orange yes. County a couple times. I don't want to mention it because I don't want to give them any, uh, Yeah, you know, but they, like, they've been identified, too, and I don't know. And but, they're yeah. from all over the country and the state, too. Yeah. They're just obviously, uh, specifically because of the Kanye thing and also L.A. being, like, a liberal stronghold or whatever, right. targeting the area. But, um, yeah, it was like just immediately shocking but i did see one thing that was like and you wouldn't believe the amount of people that were honking because it was like honk if you agree and it's like if you saw that no, it, would fuck like you. A, it would be like a natural reaction yeah. you'd just be like ah yeah ah. so i don't believe that people were that that many people were honking in support i think it was just like Pe what yeah yeah my my natural i don't know my natural inclination would be to do something i don't just just say honk just a, you know <laughs> a, a, an aggressive honk yeah yes but a honk of disagreement. Yes. Wow. Anyway, here's the LA Times. Kanye West's weeks-long spate of anti-Semitic comments drew a well-known hate group to Los Angeles this weekend for a demonstration of support on a 405 freeway overpass, raising alarms from local officials and residents that the rapper's rhetoric was inspiring more public bigotry. On Saturday, demonstrators gave Nazi salutes as they stood behind a large overpass banner that read, Kanye is right about the Jews, according to images collected by anti-discrimination organizations and Jewish residents appalled by the group's message. And, and you would hope, I mean, you would really hope that this would be a point at which Kanye could have some kind of self-realization of the damage that he is doing to himself, of course, but also those directly around him and in a lot of ways, uh, the world around him, because he's just like, it's bad. It's bad yeah. that he's doing this. And it's been the same on like all the Chan sites, like they're fucking loving it. Yeah. They are loving this. And meanwhile- Literal Nazis are clapping at the thing you're doing. And that, that when that's going on, that's, that's when you fucked up. And meanwhile, uh, on the online spaces have been overrun of people uh, very suspiciously screaming that everyone's overreacting. Yeah, it's been the Kanye, the two big Kanye West subreddits, r slash Kanye and r slash West sub ever, mm -hmm. which I've been visiting uh, frequently these past couple weeks because it's, it's very interesting. They have the most up-to-date Kanye updates, but also the discussions are fascinating. And like mods in both of those subreddits have like, they've openly said, they're like, we are being brigaded constantly by, uh, you know, Nazis who are essentially just trying to come in and stir the pot. They, yeah, they're and, not, they're and not and Kanye try, West fans. And try to legitimize the claims and yeah. also show support so that other people feel comfortable doing it. It is a very well-oiled machine that has been operating uh, primarily in the background for yeah. since the inception of the fucking internet, but right. also peeks its head out every once in a while and it's doing it right now. And even recently, and I don't want to bring it up because it's fucking horrific, but very recently, in just the past couple of years, we've had actual real-world examples of anti-Semitism spilling into the real world and causing death and destruction. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's just very recently, not even going back uh, a couple decades. So, 
yes, this is very bad that Kanye's doing this because you can actually see what's happening now. And look, I don't know when or if he'll come to the realization that this is bad, but I mean, literal Nazis are showing their support and using Kanye's words to legitimize their bigotry. It is actually scary. And we, this isn't just some pop star saying wacky shit. This is a highly influential person whose words and mental illness are now being exploited by organized and potentially dangerous people. Yeah, people who would um, treat him the same as they'd like to treat the Jews at the first opportunity. But for now, he's quite useful to them. He is a useful idiot to them, particularly yeah. right now. Yeah, they don't, uh, they don't particularly like black people either, Kanye. Just FYI. Yeah. Anyway, the actions over the weekend finally caused whoever was left on the sidelines of all this to make statements and distance themselves from the rapper, except for Adidas, as the intensity surrounding his rhetoric is clearly rising. Um, Kim Kardashian, Ye's ex-wife, tweeted Monday, Hate speech is never okay or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them to come to an immediate end. A little bit passive there, Kim. Uh, kind of sound just like any person on the sidelines. This is your ex-husband. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have a little more power and influence over the situation, but who the fuck knows? I mean, they are, are they fully, they're, they're fully divorced though, right? There's no, yeah. there's no litigation or anything. Cause that would maybe uh, there's a, I don't know. It's not clear. And also in his Pierce Morgan interview, he was real cagey about it. And of course he still seems to think they're going to get back together or something. But, um, yeah. Uh, he's also uh, very obsessed with Pete Davidson's penis still, despite them being broken up a very short yeah, uh, no, this, uh, so. the theory is that this was all set off by uh, Kanye having the same reaction a lot of racist white people would have to having their ex uh, having sex with a, a black man. It just it just ruins them. Kanye, his this whole mental crisis started because uh, not only was his ex-wife dating a white man, but a white man with a gargantuan dinosauric penis. And it lasts forever. Uh, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre spoke about the demonstration over the weekend, saying, At POTUS ran to heal the soul of the nation after years of hate and division. As part of this healing, we need to call out anti-Semitism everywhere it rears its ugly head. These actions in L.A. are disgusting and should be condemned. Kanye was also dropped by his bank, his talent agency, his partnership with The Gap has been dissolved, and fashion brand Balenciaga said, Keep our name out of your mouth. Because he literally had it. Yeah, he had it in his mouth. Um, but like people and even lawmakers now are calling for uh, Adidas to drop him as well. We've Adidas, it. short for Adolf Dossler. Look him up. All day I dream about sex. Nope. No? Adolf Dossler, born mm. in Germany in the uh, early 20th century. What was he doing during? Oh. Oh. Well, not that those companies can't exist. Of course not. Uh, I just think it's uh, it's an interesting uh, coincidence. It's, well, it sure is. It sure is. Um, so the fact that they've, you know, so far held strong on their commitment to Kanye, it's a bit odd considering just at face value, they're a German company that you would assume would want to distance themselves. You, you would assume. From anything even resembling anti-Semitism. Yes. But uh, on the other hand, uh, he makes them a fuck ton of money. He does. Yes. But maybe the most surprising Kanye West project that has been completely shelved, though, has to be a particular documentary about the rapper because it was apparently completely finished and ready for release, but the production company behind it has since made the decision to just eat the cost and shelve the multi-million dollar documentary indefinitely. Releasing a statement regarding the decision filled with some actually some fun wordplay, yeah. all things considered. Well, this is a good statement. But it does get the point across, which uh, makes it even better. Here you go. Kanye is a producer and sampler of music. Last week, he sampled and remixed a classic tune that has charted for over 3,000 years. The lie that Jews are evil and conspire to control the world for their own gain. This song was performed a cappella in the time of the pharaohs, Babylon, and Rome, went acoustic with the Spanish Inquisition and Russia's Pale of Settlement, and Hitler took the song electric. Kanye has now helped mainstream it in the modern era. Yeah. Uh, um, they, they add that they've also made the decision not to proceed with any distribution for our recently completed documentary about Kanye West and that they cannot support any content that amplifies his platform. The statement ends with the silence from leaders and corporations when it comes to Kanye or anti-Semitism in general is dismaying, but not surprising. What is new and sad is the fear Jews have about speaking out in their own defense. Anyways, it uh, feels like today we're just going to do the entire Internet today's ro feels rogues bad, gallery, man. <laughs> it does feels bad, man. So yeah, why not do the whole rogues gallery, even if it even if it kills us? We've done Wallen Berkman, we've done Kanye. Let's go straight for Elon Musk. 
who now has less than a week to close the Twitter deal or face trial. Or what if there's a third option? What if a guardian angel out in a place like Washington, D.C. can swoop in and make it all just go away? Refuted. Fake news. Oh. It appears as though Musk might have been saved at the last minute by, well, becoming a literal national security <laughs> risk because of his direct dealings with foreign leaders and also significant foreign investments in his companies. But it turns out that was just a little bit of fake news. Oh. Uh, last week, Bloomberg reported that U.S. officials were weighing what tools, if any, were available to allow the U.S. government to subject some of Musk's ventures, including SpaceX's Starlink satellite network and his $44 billion deal for Twitter, Inc., to national security reviews. But when asked about it directly, the White House press secretary confirmed that the reports were not true. And also, uh, I guess the the national security team that would, been, would, would have been uh, looking into this uh, they were reached out to by like CNN and other various outlets, and they're like, this has never even been an open case. So right. anyways, with that out of the way, clearly there is no reason, no reason at all that Musk can't seal this deal. So he's got till Friday or else he'll be back in court, which would also be kind of funny. Here's CNN business. The billionaire Tesla CEO has until 5 p.m. Eastern time on Friday to close his $44 billion acquisition of Twitter or face a trial that was previously delayed to allow both parties to close the deal. In the weeks since the litigation was paused, Twitter has appeared to continue to take steps toward closing the deal. Bloomberg last week reported that the company had frozen employees' stock accounts in anticipation of the deal's closing and that lawyers for both Musk and Twitter were preparing paperwork to close the deal. Musk, meanwhile, told Tesla shareholders that he was excited about Twitter, even as he admitted to obviously overpaying for it. Separately, Twitter was forced to address concerns among its employees about the fate of their jobs after the Washington Post reported on Thursday that Musk told prospective investors in the deal that he planned to get rid of nearly 75% of the company's staff. Following the report, Twitter general counsel Sean Edgett sent a memo to staff saying the company does not have any confirmation of the buyer's plans following close and recommend not following rumors or leaked documents, but rather wait for the facts from us and the buyer directly, according to a report from Bloomberg. A Twitter spokesperson confirmed to CNN the authenticity of the memo. I like how the, the general counsel at Twitter's like, don't believe the rumors. But yeah, maybe start looking for jobs. Uh, you're going to hear it from us. Yeah. One way or the other. But you're going to hear it from us. So yeah, probably not a fun place to work right now, even if your job is secure, because boy, oh boy, you're doing four times the work as soon as that shit happens. Uh, Congratulations, you get to stay. No, we won't pay you more. Yes, you have to do the jobs of four people instead of one now. Time to get creative. Use that big, creative, millennial brain of yours. This is this is wild. This is, I, I totally believe this is going to happen. Oh, absolutely. Until shown otherwise, and it's going to blow up in his fucking face. Because even now, he still thinks running a social media company is like, what's the problem? We easy got, a, we got a, a guy that handles memes. We got, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the person that handles video. What do, what do you need? Moderators? Not to put Mark Zuckerberg on some kind of pedestal as a good person, but I guarantee that the uh, Burmese genocide would have been 10 times worse if uh, Elon Musk was running Facebook when that happened instead of Zuckerberg. I mean, it's hard to tell because that was also very bad. And it was it, bad, but at yeah. least Facebook, like, it was a wake-up call. They're like, oh, we actually have to do, like, Content so, moderation. So that's also a huge <laughs> issue is you've had these companies who have gone through these real life scenarios where they have had to learn from absolutely horrific mistakes. Yeah. And then Musk comes into a company, uh, you know, that's been dealing with all of this in the social media space for 10 years. And it's like, cool, now it's my time to make a couple mistakes and learn some lessons. Uh, I just think it would violate my principles to take down these posts in uh, Myanmar that are uh, calling for the genocide of a race of people. I, I think uh, they should debate this in, uh, you know, the in, in, in the world of free speech, uh, you know. Yeah, the marketplace of ideas. The marketplace of ideas. Uh, you know, if I'm going around saying you can't say this, you can't say that, well... You know, I say that's worse than genocide. I like how it's also already implied that Musk knows that uh, some tweets are bad because he deletes his own tweets. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see how this pans out by the end of the week, I guess. Thank God. Sounds like this time it's actually happening, though. For real, we think. I guess we'll see. One chapter ends, another begins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, let, next up, obviously, Donald Trump. And this week starts off with the news that the Trump Organization's criminal tax fraud trial 
is set to begin with jury selection having started on Monday of this week. Would love to be in that room as they weed out those potential jurors. Yeah, that's that's a hard one. Let me ask you a question. Do you know who the former president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, is? Well, yeah. Oh, sorry. You have to go home. Well, anyways, here's uh, NBC News with more on this. The Trump Organization stands trial this week on what prosecutors allege was a 15-year scheme to compensate top executives of former President Donald Trump's company off the books to help them avoid paying taxes, with the company's former chief financial officer appearing as the prosecution's star witness. An initial group of 132 potential jurors entered the courtroom to begin the screening process at about 11 a.m. Eastern. State Judge Juan Merchant told them the defendants are accused of a series of crimes, including tax fraud, and allegedly devised and operated a long-term scheme to fail to report income on tax forms. The judge also said potential witnesses could include Trump, his sons Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump, and daughter Ivanka Trump. Uh, so this one's interesting. I mean, the result is just it's going to be more of that same financial slap on the wrist. Yeah. It's it's not much. Uh, it's something. Uh, it sounds like he's got him pretty dead to rights, too. Like, yeah. On it's, this specific crime. Like, it's going to be like, OK, guilty. And he's going to be like, OK, what's the fine? And they're going to be like, ah, a million dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. And and that's even if, if he's if the Trump organization is found guilty on all of the counts. I yeah. mean, but uh, yeah, it could, in theory, make it harder for the Trump organization to secure any kind of substantial financial, you know, lending in the future, which is why Trump was just like, okay, well, we have Trump Org 2 now. It's a completely separate and very cool company. And that one has no issues. No hangups. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, it's a fresh company. There you go. Still got that fresh company smell. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God, more updates on mm -hmm. more characters. Here's an update on another doofus. The Basically, the transatlantic equivalent they, for... Our boy Donald Trump, Boris Johnson, and sad news, it looks like Boris Johnson has removed himself from the pool of potential British prime ministers. And in doing so, basically sealed the fate of Rishi Sunak, who will now become the prime minister of the UK. What a great system they have. There. It's your turn. And after 44 days, you get paid a pension every year for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's, and then we pick the next guy. It's cool that Liz Truss set the record that literally can't be broken because breaking it would mean yeah, that you, you do not get a pension. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The oh, this guy's already, uh, by the way, like privately wealthy anyway. So maybe yeah. he could break the record. Yeah. I think his wife's also like. And his dad. Super rich. Yeah. His yeah. dad's one of those blue names on Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. This Reese Schnock's going to be the prime minister. And that means that the Brits will now be led by the person who lost to, statistically, the worst British prime minister possible, Liz Truss. This is second place, getting, mm -hmm. getting the trophy. So obviously things are things are going well over there as they just keep passing the baton backwards. But it would have been nice, at least for the sake of entertainment, to have Boris back in the position. I mean, what could go wrong? Exactly. A lot of things. Well, let's things, see it. Things are going to go wrong anyway. Why not make it funny? But never say never. He could be back in the race before we know it. Because at this point, there's just going to be a rotating prime minister for the foreseeable future, I guess. Will Rishi make it to Christmas? I guess we'll They're see. just going to put a Santa hat on the, another piece of lettuce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's finish today's episode back here in the good old United States of America, where we love only two things, two things and two things only, baseball and ruthlessly mocking our elected officials. Two, there are two national pastimes. Luckily, both of those American pastimes were combined over the weekend when Ted Theodore Say his full name, Raphael Ted Theodore Cruz. His first name is Raphael. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he attended a Houston Astros game at Yankee Stadium. And when fans found out that he was there, why, they gave him that good old-fashioned... That New York welcome. That Bronx hello. <laughs> uh, and, like, look, first you see that Ted Cruz is there, and you're like, this sucks. But also he's there to cheer for a cheer team... Cheer for a team that everyone hates because the they The nation cheated. hates this team. Yeah. They're, a na they're a team of cheaters. And also, they're a team that was in the process of robbing New York City of appearing in the World Series. So, yes, all bad. And uh, all those things combined led to just the best, most natural reaction uh, yeah. from New Yorkers towards Ted Cruz. So, um, there was obviously some wonderfully colorful language on display here. But uh, it is particularly satisfying to hear someone, particularly with a New York accent, yeah. yell... Eat my dick, you asshole, directly at Ted Cruz's face. Here's some more footage. Hey, fuck you, you racist, you 
piece of shit! Fuck you! Fuck you, man! You suck! You fucking you suck. suck, dude! You're in this place! You go to fucking hell, dude! You Remember when place. Trump called your wife you ugly? Suck. You go, go to hell! Trump. Get the fuck out you of New York! Get out of New York! Trump called your wife we ugly and you, you loved it! You, you ugly you fuck! Suck. Get the fuck you out suck. of here! Man, I feel like Ernie Hudson at the end of Ghostbusters. I love this town! <laughs> Nobody does it like New York! <laughs> Undefeated! But really, yeah. I mean, New York is a land of extremes, but you can always count on New Yorkers to do some shit like this. The only city that could potentially be even funnier. Reality has the potential to do something really funny right now. The only city here. The only city that is funnier than New York is Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Phillies oh, are yeah. facing the Houston Astros in the World Series. Oh yeah, World they've got TV. they've got uh, arguably like they're either tied or right next to New York as far as like good old fashioned violence, punching and fighting. Uh, is Philadelphia where that guy ate horse shit after uh, the e the Eagles won the Super Bowl? Maybe. I, they, yeah, I think so. uh, yesterday they were greasing up the light poles uh, yeah, in anticipation yeah. for the win. Um, so. Also, they have the best mascots. Obviously, Gritty. The fanatic. The fanatic is the OG. Yeah. <laughs> they should let Gritty in the stadium for this. Yeah. I don't see why not. But yes, I hope that Ted Cruz makes it to some Philly games. I think that would be very funny because the language in New York is, I mean, Philly is on par as far as colorful language goes. Yeah. There was like a tweet even before they beat the Padres that was like, "Average Padre, Padres fan, I'm enjoying a nice IPA while I watch this game." It's like average Phillies fan. Mentally calculating whether they can get out of jail in time for the Eagles game <laughs> if they get caught like fighting at the yeah. Phillies game. So, all things considered, a good World Series, especially if Ted Cruz is there. Yeah, and we hope for it. I'm uh, that's how I'm going to choose my team. Whoever is not Ted Cruz's team, whoever's not the Astros. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's our episode, uh, our most recent episode of Weekly Weird News. We talked about uh. You know, a long-awaited alt-right superhero movie that sadly, um, you know, not going to happen. Well, now the story be... behind why is very funny. It's going to be under the Donda production label soon. Yeah, yeah. Kanye's going to rescue that project. Also uh, on News Dump, I think it was just more Kanye shit. Yeah, no, there was. Well, no, we talked about Black Adam. By the way, Black Adam got sixty-seven million, so it didn't, you know, yeah. blow people's expectations out of the waters, but it hit its low estimate. All right. Uh, yeah, and other stuff. You'll figure it out. You'll, You'll watch it. it Thank you so much for watching, by the way. We really appreciate it. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Maybe click the join button. Who knows? But at the very least, leave a like, leave a comment, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.